Good morning, Good Shepherd. Welcome to worship. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter and the eighth Sunday of COVID-19 social distancing. We are glad that you are with us, whether you are here in our Zoom church or watching us on YouTube. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. With you. Together throughout this season of Easter, we give thanks for the enduring gifts of baptism. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. In this time of pandemic, you provide life-saving water in which we wash our hands. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice 
that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Acts. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let me invite you to respond to the even numbers in bold type, and Elaine will lead the congregational response. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along the right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Very truly I tell you, Anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'd like to spend a few moments talking about another way that you may practice your faith at home. Through these times, I'm not sure, uh, I know we all have been missing different things, but one of the things that I really miss about our being to, not being together in person is the ability to sing together. And uh, this this week, I, uh, um, Pastor Sue and I have both spent some time in the last couple of weeks trying to think about and figure out how we can step into this time into the future in singing together, even through this medium of Zoom. 
And uh, I wanted to share with you this morning something that I have, a melody that I have been hearing over and over again as a prayer. And it's really, it's come to me at different points when I have felt um, anxious or concerned or really worried about what the future is bringing. It's a very simple tune and the words are very easy for you to catch. And I, I'm going to teach it to you so that the hope is that when you, that this melody might come to your mind as a prayer, if you are feeling the same way. It's called, What We Need Is Here. And those are all of the words right there. What we need is here. It comes from a poem by Wendell Berry, but what we need is here, is the text. And the melody goes like this. I'll sing it, and then I'll invite you to join with me in singing. If you stay on mute, it works best, but you can sing from wherever you are with whoever is around you, and we will sing this together. It goes like this. Just listen. What we need is here. What we keep listening, what we need is here. So we sing that line twice, but the melody changes a little bit at the end. I'll sing it again, keep listening. What we need is What we need is here. Won't you sing with me? What we need is Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations and thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'm going to take off the screen sharing. And I invite you, if you would like to switch to speaker view, or if you want to stay on gallery view, that works too, but this way I'll be able to see you a little bit more. Years ago, anthropologist Margaret Mead, do you remember her? I remember learning about her as a child in elementary school, but anthropologist Margaret Mead was asked by a student what she considered to be the first sign of civilization in a culture. The student expected Mead to talk about things like fish hooks or clay pots or grinding stones together. But no, Mead said that the first sign of civilization in an ancient culture is a femur or a thigh bone that had been broken and then healed. Mead explained that in the animal kingdom, if you break your leg, you die. You cannot run from danger. You can't get to the river for a drink or hunt for food. You are meat for prowling beasts. No animal survives a broken leg long enough for that bone to be healed. So a broken femur that is healed is evidence that someone has taken time to stay with the one who fell. Someone has bound up the wound has carried this one to safety and has tended the person through recovery. Helping someone else through difficulty 
is where civilization starts, Mead said. This is a lens through which I hear our Bible text for today. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Easter, when every year we reflect on this image of Jesus as the great shepherd of the sheep. Each year we hear a little bit different section from John's Gospel, but the images are all similar. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, is the one who tends, protects, and provides for the sheep. You know how powerful and enduring this imagery is, as it was chosen as the name for our congregation over 60 years ago. Add to this, these Good Shepherd, I am the Good Shepherd texts from John, the beautiful and beloved strains we heard from Psalm 23, words many know by heart. These words fall over us every year, but I think they're especially new this year. I think in this time of global crisis and soaring death, we turn to these images and consider how God shepherds us beyond our wants, beyond our fears, from death into life, through the valley of the shadow of death, into green pastures, beside still waters, to a table where we are all invited to feast with our enemies. Oil anoints the head and goodness and mercy overflow all the days of life on earth. And then we are given a glimpse of the early church community in the book of Acts. Day by day, the text says, they provided for each other. They cared for and tended the needs of all around them. They ate together with glad and generous hearts and they made sure there was enough. I hear all three of these texts with a twinge of sadness this time around. This shepherd imagery doesn't seem to work as well when our flocks are scattered and isolated. The shadow of death threatens to overwhelm all of the goodness and mercy. And day by day of distancing doesn't feel like joyful community, but rather like something we must endure on the way to an incredibly uncertain future. Yet into all of this, I also hear Margaret Mead's words. Helping someone else through difficulty is where civilization starts. This is where we find hope in this time that threatens to overwhelm. In caring for each other, that is the backbone of community. Taking the time to tend the sick, to feed the hungry, protect the vulnerable, support the weak. This is the stuff of real life. And this is exactly what we, we see from these Good Shepherd texts. It's interesting to me that John expli explicitly says that those listening to Jesus, his disciples, didn't understand what he was saying to them. Did you hear that part? They didn't understand the words he was using. They couldn't connect with this imagery of the Good Shepherd. You know why? Because they were fishermen with a tax collector mixed in. They were not shepherds. They didn't know how to react or respond as shepherds did, as a shepherd who tends the sheep with care. It wasn't in their lane. It wasn't part of their worldview. When Jesus called them, he invited them to come fish for people, not tend the flock. And so they didn't get it because it wasn't part of what they knew, what they were expecting. This too feels oddly comforting to me today. I can relate to their dismay. Maybe you can too. I don't know how to be a video editor. I'm not a televangelist or a TV preacher or even a homeschool teacher. We were not called or trained or prepared to face what the world is demanding of us today. Yet, here we are, being reminded once again in a totally new way what it means to be human to be in relationship, to be in community. We take care 
of those in need. We adapt, we change, we evolve. We learn to make the jump from catching fish to tending sheep. We seek healing and restoration. We bind up those broken femurs and we work to bring down the fevers where, whenever we can. So friends, that's what I've got for this Good Shepherd Sunday. I'm not totally sure it's enough. I feel that way about a lot of things these days. Yet this is the gospel truth that is speaking clearly to me today. It is powerful that we have what we need to face these times. What we need is here. What we bring and who we are, God reminds us, is enough, even for these days. And so may you feel the power, the protection, and the call of community on this Good Shepherd Sunday and always. Amen.
please join me now in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness, forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue now with the prayers of intercession. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Shepherding God, we thank you for the compassion and dedication of teachers, parents, and students as we work together in community to find new and creative ways to educate our children and finish out this school year. Help us also to look for new and creative ways to celebrate the special moments and events in their lives with hope for tomorrow and gratitude for all that we have today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, be with all those on the front lines of this pandemic. We thank you for the healthcare workers who every day put themselves at risk, are often separated from their families, who are working extra long hours and do not always have all the supplies they need. Bless them, O Lord, with compassion, stamina, bravery, hope, dedication, love, and faith to see them through. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, we hear on the news about farmers having an excess of produce they cannot sell, while at the same time, we hear about people around the world who are truly starving. People standing in long lines, sometimes over a mile long, just hoping to receive food day after day. Help us to know how we can reconcile this situation, to find ways for all to be fed, to get food where it is most severely needed, and feed the hungry as you have asked us to do. Your work, our hands. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guiding God, be with all world leaders, governors, county executives, mayors, and anyone else who is in a position to make decisions about how and when we might reopen businesses, restaurants, stores, public facilities, and all other aspects of our lives that have been put on hold or closed. Guide them all in making the right and best decisions for the right and best reasons. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we ask that you be with our pastors and all clergy of all faiths all over the world. 
who are finding new and creative ways to be church and tend to their flocks. Sustain them with your love and care. Strengthen them with words of faith, comfort, and hope. And help them to help all of us to remember the power of prayer and the steadfastness of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, you carry us tenderly. We pray that you be with all the people who suffer with any type of illness. Today we pray especially for some of those who are known to us. Lois, George, JC, Karen, Mel, Ellen, Nancy, Stephen, Elise, the family of Art, Colette, Michael, Lois, Jennifer, Lori, Nancy, Susan, Diane, Neil, the family of June, Debbie, Suzanne, Kara and her co-workers, and Susan. Help them to feel your healing presence with them. Lord, in your mercy. The congregation is now invited to offer their prayers of thanksgiving, intercession, or praise. Please use the chat feature or speak the prayers aloud in your homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear also, Lord, those prayers we keep tucked away in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforting God, this one virus, this time of pandemic is affecting us all. Some have experienced devastating loss. Some are working harder than ever. Some are dealing with extreme loneliness and boredom. Some are fighting for their lives. And some are juggling more than ever, trying to be all they need to be to all the people in their lives. Be with us all, O oh Lord. Meet each of us where we are. Comfort and strengthen us as needed. Grant us courage to face each new day. Help us to feel the light of your love surrounding us and within us as you walk with us in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your everlasting and steadfast care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Joined as one by the Holy Spirit, we now pray the words that Jesus taught us. I invite you to unmute yourselves. Our Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will, your your will, will be, be done, done on earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give us, Give us today, today our, our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are the Lord's, now and forever. Amen. We turn now to our offering. We are church together even when we are forced to be apart. And Pastor Kathy and I are so grateful for the ways that you have continued to support Good Shepherds Ministries by your giving, by your showing up, by your faithful prayer. There are three ways that you can contribute financially to Good Shepherds Ministries. First, you can write a check and drop it in the mail. Send it to us at our address, 1530 Falk Road, Wilmington, Delaware, 19803. That continues to be probably the easiest way for us to receive and process your offerings. 
you can go to our website, www.goodshepherd-wilmington.org and click on our Give button. Or if you have a smartphone, you can scan that QR code and that will take you immediately to our online giving portal where you can give by credit card. If you have an iPhone, it should work if you open your camera and focus on the QR code. If you have an Android phone, you probably need a QR reading app. But either way or any of those ways, we are very grateful for all of the ways that you support our ministries. We turn now to some special music offered this week by Frank Grace. Let us pray. Abundant God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our risen Savior and Lord. Amen. We turn now to a time of announcements. First, just like the last couple of Sundays, right after worship this morning or shortly after, we have Sunday school offerings for our children. If you are in that category, then you should have received an email earlier this week or the Tuesday email from Good Shepherd contains the appropriate Zoom links. Those classes will start around quarter to 11 this morning. This next announcement is about an offering from the Synod. On three different occasions in May, the Synod will offer seminars or learning opportunities they are calling Resurrection, Living, and Giving. These will focus on three topics. Each separate session has all three of the topics. They have to do with legal guidance on legacy gifts and um, medical directives, medical guidance that you might need for end-of-life decisions, and also a pastoral care aspect. There's a, I didn't say that very well, did I? While I am rambling here, you can read the announcement that you can see on the slide in front of you. There's a ton of information. The Synod is trying to walk alongside us and help us think through things that might be in the forefront of our thoughts now that we are living eight weeks into this pandemic. Um, I commend this to you. The bishop will be involved in it. They have an attorney and I think a physician who will present different aspects of this. And although I have made no sense at all in trying to explain it to you, I think it will be very well done. If you need more information, you can go to the Synod's website, which is down there in blue, www.demdsynod.org. I have signed up for Wednesday, May 13th, if that's of interest to you. 
These are meant for all people, clergy and lay people and everyone else. So I invite you to consider that. And finally, on Wednesdays from 10 in the morning until 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we continue to receive donations to support the LCS Food Pantry at St. Stephen's. They are in need of what food pantries always need, shelf-stable grocery items, as well as personal hygiene and cleaning products. We have topped 3,000 items, I think, over the last five or six weeks which is really phenomenal, right? And it's the coolest thing to be out there on those Wednesdays when our neighbors are bringing bags and bags of groceries for the food pantry. So be part of that community outpouring of care and support for our neighbors. So that's Wednesdays from 10 to two, um, any kind of weather. So far we've been blessed with really beautiful weather. I think that's the end of our announcements. So we continue now with our closing hymn. Oh, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Devote yourself to the teachings of the gospel, to your prayers and our Christian fellowship day by day for they will lead you to a glad and generous heart. Walking together in Christ, we grow in faith and love to share Christ with the world. Go in peace, share the good news, alleluia. Feel free to unmute, unmute yourselves and join me in this last line. 
Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank <laughs> you.